Good morning, welcome to Cool Outdoors. I'm your host, Brandon Scott, and with me today is Nash. What's up? We are doing something a little little bit different today. It's probably gonna be its own start its own playlist called, I don't know, History Walks or Historic Strolls or something. I'm still playing with the title for a playlist. But it's two days before the new year and there's like no snow in the mountains so we haven't gone and done any snowshoeing and skiing we're not going to give up on that for the winter but we need to just go find something else to go do so we figured the, one of the first things would be good to go do is come out here to Whidbey Island and go explore a couple of the uh, old World War II uh, forts and gun batteries that were built obviously during World War II in case of a Japanese invasion so this first video is going to be at Fort Eby which we're going to go wander around and in through the gun battery, which is, you'll see, it's pretty cool. I've done this a couple of times. It's pretty freaking sweet. And we'll go walk along the beach a little bit and explore EB. And then the second video, because it's more expansive, and it's going to need to be its own video, is Fort Casey, which is a much bigger fort with much more guns and much larger area. And let's see here. Fort EB is 650 acres. And it's also got, not only does it have the gun battery and a bunch of beach access, it's got two different campgrounds, one large, there's two, yeah, two different campgrounds, and there's 15, 16, 20, 20 different trails crisscrossing in back in the woods to make over 28 miles of trails. So you could come back here a lot, not just to see the gun batteries and walk along the beach, but there's a lot of trails to do if you're in the area. So probably could make a bunch of videos here. And then we'll go do Fort Casey. On a separate video, obviously, but first things first, I think we're going to go hop in, put our headlamps on, and go hop in the uh, gun batteries and go explore some of the earthworks and such. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tagging along. So, Clank is parked here. We're at the gun battery parking lot on the south end of the main state park area. Further to the south over there is the campground, which is closed till March 1st. So this is a state park, so you will need a discovery pass, whether you buy one when you get to the state park or you buy the yearly one online like we do. But we're gonna go wander this area and go find the gun batteries. Now, I haven't been here in a long time, so I don't remember exactly where everything is, but I do know this direction is going to be the water and views of the Olympics to start off with. I'm looking for them as part of the fun anyway. Yeah. Ah, there we go. We found it. Well, that was easy. So, gun battery is there. We'll be going in there shortly. Directly in front of us. I think that's swim, maybe? And then, so like I said, so there's a beach trail that goes that way, that goes north. There's the bluff trail. It's actually quite a ways down to get to the water, which we will get to eventually. Yeah, that's swim. That is swim? Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. Either that or Port Angeles. I don't think you can see that. Uh, Port Angeles is going to be further around. So that's swim then. Yeah. So over there is like Port Townsend. So there is multiple forts around we can explore. This is Fort Eby. We got Eby. Fort Casey. Down there Warden, Ward, Fort Warden. Warden and should be like, Warden and Flagler should be both over there-ish. Yeah. I've seen those before. This is like yeah. So yeah, there's a trail that goes along the bluff. You can walk from EB to Casey. It's a uh, part of the Pacific Northwest National Scenic Trail, but part of that trail goes through private property and it's kind of, the trail there is not maintained very well. Don't worry, we'll be going in there momentarily. I'm just gonna come over here. So yeah, gun battery, two big gun pits, one there and one on the other side, which we will see shortly. And then we'll go walking in here into the bunker area. So protection island, so on and so on and so on. So yeah, Squim and Port Angeles are over there. Whee, it's a little breezy. It's a little breezy. So straight on to Fuca, Vancouver Island, Victoria is somewhere in there. Olympic Peninsula, Squim, Port Angeles, and then back down that way is the only way in and out of Puget Sound unless you go behind us through Deception Pass, but that's like super duper skinny. So the only way you could invade Puget Sound is to come down there and have to go right through here, hence why all the guns are put here, because look, it's a battleship. We shoot it, pew pew. All right, let's go in and deploy headlamps. Did it say what the caliber of guns was there? No, but I'm assuming it was like 
big boy guns like 150 mils at least turn on headlamp so now we go do the cool part oh is it lit in here oh they actually have it lighted in here now okay cool hmm. Hinges. Nice and smooth too. Sweet. This would be the living quarters for the soldiers. Yeah. Storage, living quarters, um, kitchen, pretty much everything you need. So you don't have to ever so you don't ever have to actually be outside if you don't need to. Until you're actually firing the guns. But we're not lining the audience with guns. No, it's Yeah, I don't remember it being lit when I was here last time. Oh well. I think this is the entry. Oh yeah, this is the back. I th oh, this might, that might be the engine room for heat and such. Can we get this to open? Nope, that feels like it's actually locked. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep, that one's padlocked too. Lame. I wonder if they have it open. So, of course, this is the back entrance to go back out to the island. Yeah, I'm assuming this is like the main, probably engine room. Yep, these would, these would be the stands for the generators to keep the engines for heat and light and electricity and such. And that's probably the out vent. These are probably to let heat out. All right, Nash, I'm going to push you up into there. Oh, did you walk around? Yeah, I was wondering if that would happen. Oh, before I knew we could walk around, I was going to say I was going to push you up there. <laughs> vent shaft. Huh. This I-beam sitting here. Maybe this is where they loaded the ammunition. Yeah, they probably had a crane way through here. Oh yeah, this is how they loaded the ammo and such through. Probably ammo stowage maybe. I don't know, it's kind of hard to find good information on what this looked like. Well, this was kind of a last minute deal so I didn't spend too much time looking and researching but you know, it was cool. I'm sure if I had to spend some actual time looking and researching into what all happened, we'll go back that way. I just want to go look at this entrance real quick. That I'd be able to find actual good information. Yeah. Uh, you want to go up top? We'll go up top real quick and then come back down through that entrance. So the state and the state parks are really starting to lean into hiking and exploration. They got a whole first day hikes program for, you know, January 1st, which is in a couple of days. So hopefully, if I get January 1st off, we'll go out and go do something. So this would have been the main observation platform. Obviously, there would have been no trees right here specifically, but they would have tried to keep it good and camouflaged. Keep off the stairs. We won't get much closer. I just want to go take a peeky peek. So there's the other gun emplacement. We'll go back down through and go check it out. Cool, cool. It's all fun and exciting. Some of you may not enjoy this very much, but you know, that's okay. I enjoy it. Exactly. This is for mine and Nash's benefit. If enough of you watch it to where we start getting paid to put these videos up, that's just even better. Yep. This is an important part of state and national history to learn about, and it's good that our state 
takes pretty good care of these places, the few of them that are around. Into the belly of the beast. The headlamps on now I want to go do the uh, ape caves in St. Helens. So oh, came yeah. from that way, so yeah, here's the other outbound. Do these move? Yes, I just pulled on the wrong one. More storage. I'm sure all these would have been like bunk houses and you just have bunks lining the walls. That's what I would assume. Good heavy doors, but they don't squeak at all. So yeah, just a good little underground bunker, a little fort to defend in case an invasion. Same idea with the Germans in Normandy. They just had a heck of a lot more of them. And I'm sure there's a heck of a lot of them in the UK also. So that I think is gonna conclude the underground tour portion. So here's your second gun emplacement. What is this? Like I was saying in the intro, there's a heck of a lot of trails. There's like 19 or 20 named trails. Yep, see? And then here's part of the Pacific Northwest Trail, which we need to actually do like legit sections of it. So now I guess we'll go this way and go see if we can get onto the beach, eh? Mm -hmm. Although I know the legit beach access we'll have to get back and go drive around up north a little ways and get to, it's like Point Partridge or something and there's legitimate beach access down there. Yeah. So we'll do that here shortly, but. And as you can see, it doesn't look like there's anything there. I mean, obviously you'd see the gun sticking out, but when you're, 10 miles out, like where that container ship currently is, you would never know that this was the pokey dangerous part of the beach versus anything else. This is probably just a vent shaft down here. Just a wee bit breezy. So if we have time, at the end of the day today, we'll go do a little bit of stuff at Deception Pass State Park, but that'll probably just be its own day at its own time. And then we're purposely not gonna go to, to EB's Landing National Historic Site. Oh, sick, wish we could go down there. That would be cool. Oh, this is probably the forward observation, yeah. The pillbox, the forward pillbox. That would be cool to be able to get into, oh well. I think this is just gonna be a big ass bluff straight down to the water. Yeah, so uh, good luck getting down there at the moment. Someone tried to. Oh, I'm sure multiple people have. But yeah, in the summertime, obviously there'll be a lot more people here when it's, you know, sunny and 70 and not as windy. But, and then obviously down here, like you're gonna see whales and orcas and stuff during the right times of year. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go back to Clink and go over to the beach, to the proper beach access and go walk on the beach. And maybe, in fact, probably, we'll come back here and I'll go set up a long exposure somewhere down here and shoot a long exposure before we leave to go to Fort Casey. Yeah, but I wanna go check out the other, I wanna go check out the other part first. I mean, it's not that much of a drive to get back over here. So yeah, we'll go over to the beach next. Now we're parked at Point Partridge. Clink is there. The beach Wait. axis is right there. Uh, you want to go <laughs> that way. But there's a little trail that comes up to the top of this bluff, so we'll do that first. And then we'll drop down to the beach. Oh, uh, 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 uh. 
So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of picnic tables with little barbecues. Again, we're here in December on a kind of windy, crummy day. So there's not a ton of people here, but I guarantee you in the summertime when it's nice, especially on a weekend, this place is packed and all these picnic spots are used. And I mean, why wouldn't you? This would be a pretty dang good spot for a barbecue with a view. Tucked in the trees for some shade. Big group spot. There's bathrooms and more overflow parking there. Plenty of picnic opportunities. Sham wow. Sham wow. Clouds rolling off by a of spit over there. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll uh, hang out on the beach here for a little bit, and then we'll go back to the yeah, and then we'll go back to the gun platform. And I'll shoot a long exposure from above on the top of the bluff down there. He got himself a cool spot to take a picture. Is there a smudge on the camera? Might be a smudge on the camera. If so, that is my fault. So I probably grabbed the camera lens with my finger. Somebody blazed the way through Yeah. No beach fire. So is this another access to the beach? Yeah. Oh, then we'll we'll pop on down there once we're done. Instead of going back all the way back to the cas. Oh, this just swings you around. Okay, well, kind of poopy, but whatever. Yeah, we'll take that trail back and go down to the beach. No, hold on. We're going. Yeah. Huh? Uh huh. This what happens when you don't plan ahead. You just kind of aimlessly wander. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes that's the best part. Caution. Go ahead. Maintenance. Go ahead. Oy. So I think the last thing of interest that's not walking on the beach over here is Lake. Oh, it's like para para something. And it's supposed to be pretty decent bass fishing. And it looks like there's a dock on it too, so again, another thing to do. A lake tucked in yards away from the beach that you can fish in. Probably wouldn't swim in it because I bet it's pretty stagnant during the summer. It appears the lake waters are high. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, good and stinky. Oh, there's a boat launch. Good luck. Crap. Hmm. It's supposed to be good access. I don't know where, though. I can see a dock on that side, but I think that might be somebody's private property over there. I am not sure. I know there is access to this lake. But I'm not sure if we came from the right direction. You might have to go that way to go find better access to the shore. But we shall go to the beach. I believe the technical, technically this beach is called Libby Beach, L-I-B-B-E-Y. So we'll go have ourselves a nice little stroll on the beach. <sighs> And no, I'm not going to be editing anything out just because it's so short and so little that there's nothing to really stop and go from. It's not like we're going on a 10 mile hike. It's going to take us all day. Oh, insulated pants are warm when not in the wind. Yeah. 
You know what? I'm kind of mad at myself. Why? I should have just taken the long exposure when that container ship was going by to add some perspective and scale. Yeah. yeah. Mistakes have been made. See, so yeah, most people come out over there. But because we're cool and adventurous, we're going to come out over here. And we are going through king tides right now. But that was earlier in the day. So... There'll be a little bit of beach to walk on. But not a ton of beach to walk on because it is pretty high tide. There's that sea breeze I've been missing. Nash is going to get wet. So yeah, a little bit of everything at a Fort Evie State Park. A little bit of history, a little bit of forest wandering, a little bit of beach wandering. You get it all. Nope, that was the uh, only ship. Well, there's one coming out, but he's gonna be way over there and you're not gonna see him. Oh well. Hello, Kananana. Can, Kananana? Kananana. Uh, those are actually the San Juans. I think Victoria, or Vancouver Island is more over there. Those are the San Juans. Oh, I was waving that way. Oh, I thought you were waving directly. Oh. I was like, mm, that's not Kananana. That is San Juan Islands. San Juan Islands. We'll walk the beach for a couple minutes and then we'll go take our long exposure and probably have lunch. And then we'll be on to Fort Casey from there. So I will tag the... I will tag the long exposure right there. Oh, oh that's a lot of squishy seaweed. And then our next stop at Fort Casey State Park, I will tag right there. Mm, slippy. It's a wee bit slippy this is. But if you're wondering why we get all these bluffs and stuff, it's because we are in a very geologically active area. All this was a... Uh, I'm not sure what exact unit this is. This might be the Vashon Stade. This might be some other sedimentary unit. This is all pretty much a glacial outwash plain from when the glaciers at one time in the last ice age filled the Puget Sound to just over three, 4,000 feet up here in the northern and near Canada, five to 6,000 feet of thickness of ice. And as they retreated, they dumped a whole heck of a lot of sediment. And of course, as the ice is melting, it's trying to get out that direction towards the Pacific Ocean. So the water had to flow through too. And where the water flowed, it cut low areas that then filled in where the ice was also cutting to create the Puget Sound and the high areas became the islands and the hills of Puget Sound like Whidbey Island, Fidalgo Island, Bainbridge Island and so on and so on and then where there is no water at the moment you got West Seattle, Queen Anne Hill, the hill that uh the high area that um SeaTac Airport sits on and so on and so forth. And I actually have no idea how far, how much further north this state park land goes for running to somebody's private like, property. So we could probably turn around at some point and then we'll go get back in Rex or Plank. Wow, er, wrong. Stuff it. I'll get a picture. Walk. Just wanted to get some perspectives. I don't know, however much further you want to go and then we can turn around and walk back. And turn the camera off at some point. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that'll work. 
walk to the log, turn around, walk back, set up long exposure, back at the gun battery and have some lunch. But yeah, poorly sorted junk. You've got gravel there, and then you've got sand and silt there. That's just what glacial outwash does. It's not, oh no! He almost ruined his booties. So you got the sand ones there, Vancouver Island there, Olympic Peninsula there. Victoria's over there somewhere. Vancouver, BC is way up there. Seattle and the rest of Puget Sound is down that direction. Sick. Nash finds pretty rock. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have a geology rock identification app. I could probably open that sucker and actually tell you what this is, YouTube. But that requires me using my brain cells and I don't like doing that. Where is my map? I want to open my map. It says it is the Partridge Gravels. So yes, glacial gravels. And then further inland is the Everson Drift, which is just more another uh, way to quantify and specify what kinds of glacial outwash junk it is. Buenos. Okay. Reverse course, fire when ready, spin, launch, zoom. I'll shoot this, going back this direction for a minute or two, and then I'll kill the camera. And then we can cuss all we want, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Yes, the wide variety of rocks on the beach is indicative of how far reaching these glaciers go. Most of these rocks are probably from deep within the coast mountains of BC, north of, north and east of Vancouver, the city of Vancouver, British Columbia. And they were transported here, either in the glaciers or in the outburst floods, going underneath the glaciers and out from the glaciers as they receded. So, just a bunch of poorly sorted junk. Beautiful, Nash for scale. See, you see that? You see that, YouTube? I got him a nice bright red jacket, so he's impossible to lose. Till we go to Utah. They'll have to find him a different color, but here in Utah at sunset, you won't find him. Yeah, but in uh, the greens of the Pacific Northwest, he'll be pretty hard to lose. Just gotta find him a bright blue jacket for when we go to the desert and everything's brown red. Men don't get the white color. Yeah. All right, I will post probably. I don't know, like I normally do, a 15 second clip of the long exposure we will go take back at the gun battery. And then we will see you shortly at Fort Casey. Talk to you later. Ciao. Huh? Bye.